Has your pet just been bitten by a snake? You've just seen it happen because I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do right now so that your pet has the best chance at survival. Now for those of you that want to carry on listening, I'll get back and I'll talk about things a little bit more depth in a little bit. But right now, I'm just going to give you that quick, very quick emergency advice. If you find your dog or cat collapsed on the ground near a snake and they look dead, always check for a heartbeat. If they have a heartbeat, then it can potentially be saved. Remember, these pets are paralyzed. They're not unconscious. They can still hear you and they know you're there. They can't blink, but they can might be able to move a little bit, but they can hear and they can feel. So if you act fast, you might have a chance. Okay, what have you got to do? Straight away, you've got to call your vet. You're going to pick up your pet and you're going to carry them to the car. Someone else is going to be driving because you are going to give mouth to nose resuscitation to keep oxygen in their system. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold the dog's or the cat's mouth closed with your hand and then you're going to place your entire mouth over their nose and you're going to blow forcefully every five seconds. Now the toxins don't have a direct effect on the heart, but without oxygen it will soon stop working and so will the brain. So if you're not sure whether your pet has a heartbeat, just start breathing for them and get driving to the vet clinic. It's far better to be safe than sorry. As I said, lack of oxygen will kill your pet before anything else. So please, if your pet has collapsed and appears not to be breathing, just do this. <laughs> All right then, now that we've got that covered, for those that were quickly googling what to do, I will now go into more depth. If you, For those of you that want to hear the long version... In this video, I'm going to cover what to do when you find or see that your pet has been bitten and why we actually do this. I'll also briefly cover what to expect at the vet clinic regarding treatment and also some idea about costs. If you want to learn more about how to keep your property and yard snake free, also make sure you check out our next video um, and we'll put a link below because that will help you too. So if you haven't met me before, hello there, I'm Dr. Lee and I run YourVetOnline.com where you can receive vet advice about any of your animals 24-7. On this particular channel, I provide plenty of animal health information so that you can learn how to keep your pets and horses living their best and healthiest lives. Now make sure you subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you know when we drop a new video. It also definitely helps me to know whether we're actually producing videos that are of benefit to you. So yeah, let us know. All right then, let's get right to it. Now I have to say it, all snake bites or suspicions of a snake bite do actually require emergency treatment and or just assessment at your vet clinic. The risk of thinking that your pet has received a dry bite and doing nothing will often result in death and I've seen that plenty of times. You really do have to ask yourself, do you really want to take the risk? Now I do know that vet treatment for snake bites is expensive. A single vial of anti-venom can cost anywhere from 500 to well over a thousand and it can be really tricky especially if you don't have any evidence that suggests your pet has actually been attacked although I must say we do all vets will do a diagnostics to make sure that they're not giving anti-venom without due regard and without cause because yeah we don't want to do that now when we don't know, we aren't quite too sure if they've actually received a bite by a snake, we do have to think a, a little bit more about the circumstances leading up to the event. Was your pet completely normal? You know, were they, were they a little bit off that day or the days previously? Or were they, yeah, no reason for them to suddenly collapse or be acting weird? Were they in an area known to have snakes? And have you seen snakes there before? 
And three, did you notice any other animals going a bit stir crazy just before noticing an issue with your pet? Because I know sometimes you'll hear the birds will start screeching, other dogs are barking, and these could all be signs that there's actually a snake in the vicinity. The symptoms of snake bite are pretty non-specific and sadly that really doesn't help us much at all in the heat of the moment. But if the circumstances I just mentioned before fit and if you see any of these clinical signs then snake bite really does have to be up high in your list of suspicions of what could be wrong. And I do recommend that if these suspicions fit then you really should get to the emergency vet. All right, what are some of the clinical signs that we might see? Well, the most common sign is probably weakness, wobbliness, you know, ataxia and collapse, like I mentioned before. Sometimes we might see shaking and twitching. Often the pupils are very dilated and they might not be blinking, as I said earlier. Some of them will vomit or gag and some of them might have diarrhea. Some of them also lose complete control of their bladder and bowels and sometimes we'll see blood in the urine. Many of them will actually be panting or have really, really shallow, short, you know, struggling. Well, not so struggling to breathe, but that real very shallow breathing. Um, so they're not moving their chest much and it's they're not moving a lot of air. A lot of them will actually have copious drooling, like they just excessive drooling. And of course, some we see collapsed, some might be in a coma, or some actually might be just found dead. Not all the time, but sometimes we're actually able to find the actual snake bite wound and we can see where the fangs have entered. That area might be a little bit red. It could also have some swelling start to develop. But sometimes it can actually be really hard to find exactly where a bite might have actually occurred. So don't feel that that's a sign that they didn't receive a bite. It's not always that easy to find the bites. One of the strangest signs that I've seen and heard about is when a dog particularly will collapse and then suddenly they get up and they appear completely normal. They might be just a little bit wobbly, but usually they're okay. These dogs are high risk. They've definitely been envenomated and they'll need emergency care and treatment. And this is quite a common um, sign that we see with brown snake bites. So always just wonder that in the back of your mind. And I can't stress this enough. If you are suspicious that your pet has been bitten, then it's far better to seek vet attention than to try any home remedies. I can tell you now, they just will not work. So here is the plan for you. Number one, you're always going to call the vet. You're going to advise that you're on the way with a snake bite victim. And if you know or are suspicious of the species, let the vet know. This helps the vet to get prepared. They can either tell you no, they can't see your pet because they don't have the appropriate antivenom and you must go somewhere else. Or they'll say, yep. We'll see you soon and they'll start to be getting everything underway to get everything all prepared because it's a big job trying to save the lives of these pets. Two, you're going to minimize movement and excitement. So you're going to pick up your pet from wherever they are and you're going to carry them to the car. If the venomous bite is on a limb or on an area where they can be bandaged, you can apply a pressure immobilization bandage to help prevent movement and limit blood flow but this is not a, it's not essential so please just don't waste time looking for bandage materials to be able to do this you're far better off picking them up getting them in the car and getting them on the way to the vet clinic so that they can get the antivenom as quickly as possible and while we're on the subject I just want to say I can't recommend tourniquets as these can actually restrict blood flow, especially when the limb swells. A tourniquet will restrict blood flow to all the muscles below it. 
So everything below will result in cellular death because there's no oxygen and it could result in limb loss. So please, no tourniquets. This actually applies to people too. So <laughs> never apply a tourniquet in a situation of a snake bite. Okay, three. If you can locate the snake bite marks, don't be tempted to suck out the venom. That's a bit of an old wives tale. And you, there really is no need to wash the area at all. Um, we might, if there's lots of venom there, then we can actually use that in a snake detection kit to determine what kind of bite your animal actually received. Usually we use blood or urine, but that's also a possibility. So you can cover it with light pad. Don't be tempted to apply an ice pack as this also will restrict blood flow and worsen the local effects of the toxin because it will be held into that spot. You actually do want some blood flow to occur. I just want to point out that not all venomous snakes actually release venom every time they bite. Sometimes a pet is lucky to actually have received a dry bite and surprisingly these are more common than you might think. Dry bites are often the reason why certain home remedies are thought to be miraculous cures. One such example being vitamin C. Please never inject vitamin C into the muscle of your pet in an attempt to treat a snake bite. Injectable vitamin C is a highly irritant solution and will cause pain, discomfort and increase the risk of infection at the, in, in that region of where you inject. I don't know how vitamin C became the standard treatment for snake bites, but it's shocking, it's not appropriate, and I want everyone that ever sees someone recommending it to tell them not to. It's just not worth the extra pain that it's going to cause. So it might not actually cause, it's not going to treat the, the pet's um, snake bite, like it does nothing. You need antivenom, that's the only thing that's going to be, treat a snake bite, but it's also going to cause extra problems. So it does no, it might not do any good for treatment, but it's also not doing any good because of all the nastiness that it causes due to the pain and everything like that. Okay, once at the vet clinic, the medical care that your animal is going to receive will actually depend on the type of, and species of snake that they've been bitten by. Because aside from sort of local tissue damage that is common for a few of them, we do see some particular clinical syndromes depending on the species of snake that's bitten your pet. So... One of the clinical syndromes is coagulation disorders. Now this is when the venom actually will cause what we call a procoagulant coagulopathy disorder. How's that for a bit of a tongue twister? So basically this type of venom changes the way the body clots so that there is a less clotting and the affected animal is at increased risk of bleeding to death. When we see animals that have got this type of venom that's been injected into them, we often see signs of bruising. So they might have what we call petechial hemorrhaging over their belly or areas of, um, or in their gums, you know, belly around their vulva, that sort of thing. We might see blood in the urine. We might see them have a bleeding nose. Sometimes their eyes are very bloodshot. They might even have a little bit of blood coming out their eyes and their ears. Um, yeah, it can be really quite nasty. So basically these animals have a problem clotting their blood and they are bleeding to death. Well, if they don't get treatment, of course. We can save these ones if we get to it quickly. There are some subtleties in the way the individual poison snakes actually do this coagulation pro you know, problem. But the, essentially the types of snakes that uh, cause coagulation changes are the brown snake, the tiger, taipans, mulga, and collet snakes. Okay, the next type of problem we often see is myotoxicity. And this is where some snakes cause severe damage to muscle. 
which is a process called myolysis. Bites can then cause really severe muscle pain, weakness and myoglobinuria, which is where the breakdown of the muscle proteins leak into the um, urine and then uh, pass through um, out you know when they urinate that can actually put a lot of pressure on the kidneys and myoglobinuria is actually poisonous to the kidneys so you can end up actually having other problems so like kidney failure really really nasty so the breeds of snake that cause local muscle damage include the mulga snakes collet snake tiger rough scaled taipans black snakes and the cotton mouth snakes. Now the next type of clinical syndrome we see is the neurotoxicity or paralysis. So these are bites that are neurotoxic in nature and cause a progressive descending flaccid paralysis. So usually the areas closest to the bite is affected first. So if it's on the face, then you might see the inability to blink, the tongue might hang out, there's a bit of dribbling, and as the neurotoxin spreads, it affects muscles of the diaphragm so the animal can't breathe and then it might start to cause weakness in all the limbs and so they end up not being able to walk so they might be really quite wobbly and ataxic. Snakes that cause this issue include the tiger, the taipan and death adders. Very, very nasty. Okay, once in hospital, the mainstay of treatment, once we've made that diagnosis that there actually is a snake bite and we've confirmed that, is antivenom. Antivenom itself can cause an allergic reaction, so we actually have to give this really slowly to prevent anaphylactic shock. And sometimes we actually need to give multiple vials to soak up all the venom in the animal's bloodstream. Depending on the clinical syndrome that your pet is experiencing, they'll either need IV fluids, they might need blood products, oxygens, and sometimes assisted ventilation. And that means the cost of treatment can increase dramatically. I know from personal experience dealing with animals that have had snake bites that you really are looking at about a five to $10,000 vet bill even within that first 12 to 24 hours, these, yeah, it's it, it's not just the antivenom that's very expensive, blood products are expensive, and the care required, these, these animals often require 24 seven care, especially if they're on a ventilator. It's really tough work and it requires a dedicated nurse staying with that pet constantly. Yeah, it's tough work, it's expensive. And when we talk prognosis, it really does depend on the dose of venom that your pet has received. And if you manage to get them to the vet quickly and get aggressive antivenom treatment and all the other treatments there, prognosis can be good, but it can take time. And long-term effects, oh, sometimes they have them and sometimes they don't. It really depends you know, what body organs have been affected at the time. It is worth treating though. So make sure you check out our next video because that discusses ways to safeguard your home and backyard from snakes. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss it. All right then guys, I'm Dr. Lee from Your Vet Online. Take care.